Hello, you're watching Perspective. I'm Bimanto Swastoya, and today we're going to talk about uh, Asia's economic outlook. Uh, today we have in our studio Professor Shang Jin Wei. Uh, he's the ADB's chief economist based in Hong Kong or where? Manila. In Manila. Manila. So, uh, welcome first to the, Thank to the you. Perspective. Mm, you were here for uh, for the uh, sort of the global launch of the Asia Development Outlook 2015. Correct. Can you tell me what is it for? What does it show? What does the it Asian mean? Development Outlook uh, is our uh, semi-annual assessment of yeah. the outlook of the economies uh, in the uh, region. And in this uh, uh, issue, uh, we ha are reporting several key. Uh, 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 messages. Number one, uh, Asia, developing Asia as a whole, uh, is expected to grow at about 6.3% uh, for this year and, yeah. and, and next year, uh, making the region continue to be the fastest uh, growing, growing one uh, in the world. And number two, uh, India is expected to grow at 7.8% uh, for this year, higher, uh, faster than China's 7.2%. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, number three, the lower commodity prices oil price in particular uh, provides a good opportunity for uh, many countries in the region to undertake fiscal and structural uh, reforms. reforms. And finally, we have a special look at the role of finance in Asia's growth. Right. Uh, how many countries are actually studied in, the, in this uh Analyze in this uh, in this report. The report uh, focuses primarily on developing uh, uh, Asia, Economist, and we have right. 43 developing members of ADB. ADB right. as a whole has uh, 60, uh, 68 uh, member uh, countries, including uh, high-income countries, uh, both inside the region and outside the region, uh, like Japan, right. US, Germany, and so right. on. Right. Right. So, uh, last year. We had a similar, we had a similar uh, report as well coming out. What is the, what would be the difference between last year and this year's? Well, is there a difference in focus? There are Sorry. quite a few uh, differences. I mean, uh, first, um, you know, if you look at aggregate growth rate, it's just by coincidence, mm. the region's overall growth rate of 6.3 percent yes. predicted for this year is the same as last year. Right. But there's a lot of uh, changes. You know. Uh, the largest uh, country in the region, uh, People's Republic of China, is expected to grow less fast. Yeah. You know, 7.2 percent for this year, as opposed to 7.4 uh, percent in last year, partly due to you know shrinking labor force, rising labor costs, and so on. But at the same time, uh, countries like India, Indonesia, Thailand, and so on are expected to grow faster. Right. So uh, because they are somewhat, they're large economies but smaller than PRC. So put them together. Their higher growth rates sort of happen to uh, balance out yeah, yeah. the reduction in growth rate so in PRC. Between all these countries that you say may offset uh, together the, the, the growth of China, the slowing growth of China, which country is registering the largest growth, expected to register the largest growth this year? Among large uh, you know, econ economies, uh, you know, India, India shows a, uh, a significant uh, growth pickup uh, for 2015, then what we saw. Uh, that we saw last year, the increased growth rate in India comes in two pieces. One right. is the pickup in growth rate due to stronger reform momentum, better investment climate, right. associated with the uh, uh, Modi government's uh, reform program, poor investment program. The other is a change in the way uh, Indian government collects data and, and computes uh, GDP and GDP growth, so both pieces contribute to an increase in That just happened rate. last time, the collection of that the data. That happens within the last few months, yes, ah, exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, what are the, uh, I heard about inclusive growth. Yes. Uh, what is it? Well, actually? by inclusive uh, growth, uh, you know, the key point we are uh, making there uh, is that when you have high GDP growth rates, right. it does not automatically mean Everywhere in the society, every group in society right. uh, has the same kind of uh, uh, growth. In countries like U.S., in the last uh, uh, you know decade or so, most of the benefits of growth go to the you know highest income part of society, and that's considered less inclusive. Right. Uh, yeah, and so we, and uh, PRC's growth uh, as well. So while PRC has you know, the, you know, the fastest growth rate among big uh, economies. economies yes. The income inequality is also widening, right. uh, and that's not so considered you have a gap inclusive. That is increasing the notion of inclusive wider. growth is to is to look for patterns of growth uh, that would also offer sheer, more shared prosperity opportunities mm -hmm. to all uh, 
segments of society. Is this, is this realized by the governments usually, or is it, is it something new that people mm -hmm. actually say that equitability is in, 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 in the economy is, is important to right, So to one needs to be uh, looking to uh, is, or, and, and realized is that growth does not automatically become inclusive, and you need right. to work on it. Right. Right? So that's why, uh, in addition to have pro-investment, pro-growth policies, we want to have to have policies that will pro uh, that promote inclusion. So, for example, one of the way to increase social mobility, right. to maximize the chance that even the poor segment of society can benefit can from this, is you want to offer equal access and, and affordable access to uh, education services, services yeah. health services, uh, and, and, and so on, so that uh, children coming from disadvantaged background can also one day be successful in, in, in right. the labor market and be entrepreneur and, and so on. So you, you have, so this in, has implication about education policy, fiscal policy, but also perhaps finance policy. You want to make sure that everyone uh, is yeah, actually Yeah, households from disadvantaged uh, uh, places have access to financial services. Right. Firms, un, you know, entrepreneurs with humble background will have access to finance so they can, right. you know, make their firm uh, grow. So, so, so these are the dimensions about inclusion right. and they will complement pro-investment policies. Okay. Can we, can we continue this after the break? Sure. <laughs> we will have to break and uh, please stay with us.